Holy hell. Okay. Y'all just hold your horses. My goodness. I've already got two people on. Not exactly sure why, uh, but you know, it's, it's Wednesday. So welcome, um, to, <laughs> to <laughs> welcome to the stream. It is Wednesday. I was supposed to be here yesterday. Um, unfortunately, uh, for those of you who follow on the Slack and the discord, my, my, uh, area around my house looks like a well, it looks like the the Vegas, you know, adult, you know, themed construction crew ride where you can go and play with a bulldozer. They've tore up all of our concrete. At the time I was trying to stream yesterday, there were jackhammers going on and literal demolition going on where rebar was being thrown into dumpsters and what have you. And it was uh, very interesting, very interesting. So I uh, realized that that was probably not going to happen today or that day. So um saved saved a day so um uh yeah so i today's today's fun day uh, is something that i've been looking at and researching and so uh for those of you who have not who've been paying attention in the news uh broadcom broadcom no it's not broadcom purchased. I think it is Broadcom. VMR purchased. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> so Broadcom bought VMware and, uh, obviously InfoSec Twitter, InfoSec Twittered, uh, and there's a lot of drama about that. And there's a lot of folks complaining about the fact that they're going to mess it up and, and, you know, screw the pooch and do all kinds of evil stuff with it. And there's a lot of folks out there that have said, Hey, you know, what are the alternatives? And uh, because things for home labs, for instance, like uh, VMware used to have an ESXi server that was free. So let me see, was it, e it was an ESXi? Yeah, I think this was it. I think this, they had a free version of this uh, Type 1 hypervisor. And Type 1, if, if I'm correct, is a bare metal hypervisor. So it's, it's, it's like... You install it directly onto the server, whereas something like a VMware workstation or VirtualBox or what have you uh, has an OS layer, and then the software is right above it. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, so this was the big thing that a lot of people got up with, where they said uh, they're sunsetting their free version. Yeah, so their free end of availability for vSphere hypervisor ESXi seven and eight. And that was as of the 14th of February. Um, <clears throat> so, um, you know, and and I understand that they've jacked the price up on the paid version of it, the idea that they're going after, you know, big corporate users. And, you know, there may be some big corporations that are using the free version. And I, or, you know, I'm just, I'm just guessing, but um, they want to get paid, right? And because they paid $61 billion for this, uh, so they're they're trying to make their money back. Sixty one billion dollars with a B billions. Um, so they are um, combining company focus on enabling blah 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 private hybrid something somethings. Derp derp derp. Pro what that means to you is as a home lab creator, you're shit out of luck uh, for a hypervisor unless you go to something like Zen or. Um, you know, you can use, um, what are the other options? Was that LX? No, uh, there's, there's Zen, which is another one. It's a Zen, but I, I believe you have to, you know, it, there's one option you can use for that. Um, Zen project is available. Uh, let me see. ESXi alternatives. Yeah, so you got things like Proxmox, which uh, some of the people in our Slack channel swear by uh, using. Um, vSphere uh, is no longer an option, I believe. Uh, VirtualBox, yes. Um, fortunately, it doesn't scale well, as far as I know, for the enterprise. And there's some things. Uh, Citrix is another one. You could actually use that if you wanted to. Uh, VMware Workstation, of course. And, you know, Azure Virtual Machines, if you want to go that route, that's a cloud, you know, based version. Red Hat Virtualization also is available. Um, one of the ones that I found out about at work uh, from uh, from one of our, our um, very talented people was something called XCP, 
which is a community powered Zen server. Um, it's seeing uh, an uptick in popularity uh, for obvious reasons. This is a, a turnkey server virtualization. You can use Zen Orchestra with it now. Um, and so what I thought we would do today, and <laughs> uh, uh, so full disclosure, I did install XCPNG on the little box that I bought, uh, and it works great. As a matter of fact, um, well, there's there's a few caveats, but um, uh, yeah, so there there's a few caveats. Let me let me um, let me see. Uh, let me. All right, so I'll show you the box that I bought for it. So I'm I'm a huge fan of form factors that kind of make sense, like. Yeah, you can spend 800 bucks on an Intel NUC, but it's, you know. So <clears throat> what I wanted was something that was somewhat beefy. And there we go. So I bought this, and it is um, what they call a Think Center. Now, for those of you, I've talked about these before. I actually have a, a similar one, a 93P, which is an i5 that is running uh, underneath my desk right now. Um, I would say it's fanless. I would say it is somewhat fanless. I don't remember it having a huge fan. In it. It's not, you know, th it's tiny. This thing is tiny. Um, I would say it's just a little bit bigger than these two, you know, things put together. As a matter of fact, one second, let me, boink. We're, we're gonna have a little demonstration. <laughs> And this will fail spectacularly or not. All right, so um, here's the innards of it. This is the USB hub. I put that on there because I needed another nick. So this is the inside of the 920Q. Um, I put this extra terabyte drive in, but it has an, uh, an M2 drive underneath the motherboard. So I would have to take the fan assembly off. Uh, underneath it is a obviously thermal glue, but there's a CPU, and then underneath, in, in here, right underneath this plate, is uh, the RAM, so there's 16 gigs of RAM in there, and there's also uh, an M2 drive, a 512 meg, uh, a 512 gig M2 drive, not meg. Um, so, uh, the, it comes with uh, the following ports, it has USB-C, which I was very happy, to, oh, it comes with comes with USB C, which I was very happy to see. Comes with a USB, uh, you know, audio ports, of course. On the back here, it has uh, this is the power, and it has uh, HDMI or actually Display Port has a Display Port. Uh, has it has Wi-Fi, but the antennae is broke on it and uh, does not appear to have a Wi-Fi chip inside of it. It has the antennas that I could put a, a Wi-Fi card in. As a matter of fact, the, the other one I bought, the 93P, does have a working Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip in it. So um, they, uh, the company that sold this to me um, on Amazon sent along a piece of shit 802.11n adapter. I don't know if it has Bluetooth on it. So I already had one laying around. So this, is, um, this does wireless AC and Bluetooth, I believe. Um, this is HDMI, of course. Uh, this is another USB port, USB 3, I think. It is, no, it's it's black, so that's USB 2. So the blue one next to it is USB 3. Uh, and it's got another display port. So it'll actually output three 4K monitors. And this is an i7, an i7-8700T up to 4 gigahertz, like, max speed. And it's got a tiny, tiny fan in it. Who knew? Uh, and, and it'll go up to 32 gigs of RAM. So this little box, I paid, what, 300 for? Um, expandable. It'll hold up to a 2 terabyte drive or better. Uh, it, it runs Windows 11. It had Windows 10 on it. I upgraded it to Windows 11. Worked fine. So it has a TPM2, uh, at least a TPM V2 chip in it. So it will support Windows 11 because I did try to upgrade it to Windows 11 before then. Um... So yeah, if I get tired of it, I can just put Windows 11 back on it and you know use it as a you know uh, 
you know, another server or something or, you know, put Ubuntu or something on it and run it that way. So, um, so what I've got here is I've got my USB port or my, my USB stick. I have a tiny version that runs like, what is that, 32? Uh, I think it's 32. Um, <clears throat> I didn't need all 32 to install this. But um, so I went to the XCPNG site and downloaded downloaded the app or the the community version. Uh, so there are you know, the the latest version is eight point two, but I believe uh, somebody had told me that eight point three has the ability to uh, run Windows 11 VMs if I wanted it. And that was kind of something I wanted to try out. So what I did was I went to old releases down here and went to the mirrors and downloaded the latest 8.3 version. Oh, sorry, y'all. Let's move it over here. And I'll, you know, blow up the... There we go. So I picked up the beta install or the net install version of that. It uses uh, Yum for packaging, so it must be some kind of Fedora or uh, that kind of, uh, it uses it for package manager. So I'm thinking it's a Fedora kind of uh, uh, system. Um, it could be wrong or CentOS or something like that or whatever the, whatever took over for CentOS when Red Hat killed that. So um, you could also do a full install instead, which is obviously a little bit bigger. So it's what, about six, 650 megs it'll fit on a fit on an old school cd-rom uh cdrw this one's only 178 megs but i did download it and i used rufus which is a pretty decent uh bootable usb drive system um to burn it and it's it works so i've actually got xp xcpng on here um the the thing is I, I i need to figure out how to actually use the system so i thought well i'm gonna you know i'm gonna be streaming today so let's go through the install of this so what i've done is i've got the hdmi cable out to my capture card which i'm <laughs> i'm hoping it works uh and so i'm going to let me see where is my Okay, so I'm going to hook up, where is my image source, game capture, no, display capture, no, it'd be like webcam, wouldn't it? Yeah, video capture device, uh, yeah, the DSLR, there we go. Okay, so if I've done this correctly... <laughs> <laughs> with your video peering through the blinds yesterday. What? What What are you talking about there, Digital Warhead? What's going on there? Not going to lie, got creepy vibes with your... Vi oh, peering through the blinds. Oh, yeah, that was the... Yeah, um, I posted up a little video of the noise that was happening outside yesterday. That's what it was. Um, yeah, that those are my neighbors over there. So, sorry, I completely... It was, it was a bit of a non sequitur for me, so... Um, Actually, let me, yeah, let, let's go back over here. All right, so I'm going to move myself so I can get myself out of the way. I'm going to move myself up here uh, because hopefully what happens when I turn this on, I'm going to have to grab the keyboard and interrupt the boot uh, for this. So, um, thank, oh, wait, <laughs> it won't power on. What's wrong? Oh, yeah, that's, that's because it ain't plugged in, yo. So, anyway... Um, I'm not saying this is the cheapest option you can have for a home lab. The 93Ps, which I, I think I mentioned, um, are about a hundred bucks. You can get them refurbished on Amazon. Amazon Think Center. They're the Think Center 93Ps. And yeah, they're like a hundred bucks. I mean, they even come with a piece of shit keyboard and mouse. That's how cheap they are. Um... I'm not saying, you know, let me, do, 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 do. yeah, here we go. So, yeah, I mean, it's like a hundred bucks for an i5 that has eight gigs of RAM in it. And it, you know, you swap out the 240 gig drive or whatever. Um, or you can, you know, upgrade to a 910, which, you know, 
Uh, that's a no. That, that's a little bigger. No, this one. This one is. It, yeah, this is kind of the one I have underneath my my desk right now. Um, yeah, yeah, almost almost a perfect example. So, um, yeah, there you go. It's got a USB three port. It's got you know a VGA port. Actually, mine does have a VGA, I think, uh, and a couple of USB three ports and what have you. So. I've got one similar. It's an HP Mini Elite. Yeah, exactly. And it's a Proxmox server. Exactly, Digital Word. Thank you. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. And this is 100 bucks for what could be a lab machine. You don't have to have, like, you know, a streaming box or, like, my, you know, uh, a big tower box. You know, you just need something that's going to run a handful of VMs. And, you know, technically, you probably got enough boxes sitting around where you could just pop VMware on a couple of boxes or uh, an old used laptop and do the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, and, and they're, yes, yes, they're they're very much more robust than a Raspberry Pi, I think, and probably cheaper in the long run in terms of, you know, you can just say fuck it and put Windows on it. I don't think you can run Windows on a Ras Pi, so. Um, all right, so I'm going to, I got this, I'll get this bad boy plugged in. Uh, <clears throat> so, hey, Digital, do you use a Zen Orchestrator or anything like that to, uh, you know, um, Orchestrate your your Zens, Zen being X E N. But all right, all right. So it's powered up. So it's powered up. It's got lights and and things like that. And uh, let me see. Oh, uh, let me let me go back to just me. Damn it. Okay. So okay, I can see that over there. There we go. Okay. Uh, okay. So. The pass-through worked. I can see it over there. It's the Grub version 2.06. So you can see it on the screen here. So I've got my post up. I have a portable monitor that I use when I travel. So um, it, it's awful. You're not going to be able to see a lot of this. But um, just wanted to show you. The pass-through should be working on the, this capture card, but I'm not sure exactly why. Um, and actually, I don't. Okay, so um, let me let me turn those off. No, just a few instances on the Proxmox. Uh, speaking of hardware, my motherboard died last week, so new motherboard, new hardware showed up today. A Ryzen seven. Okay. Ooh. Oh, I have the B six fifty in this one that I have for my streaming box. If you have a, do you have a graphics card there? Uh, digital. Hey, Beowulf, what's up? I learned by ad that Honda changed the prologue to a crossover and it's electric. I'm sadder than I already was. Why why do you say that, Beta Wolf? What what why why do you has a sad? Why do why do you why are you why are you sad? It's it's a it's 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 a Honda? Are you sad because it's a Honda or that it's a prologue or that it's a crossover or that it's an electric? Or a, a bit of both. Just trying to just trying to figure that out. Uh, okay, so um, uh, HD sixty. Okay, so let me. Do, do, do. Okay, that that's me. Oh, the, holy shit! Look at that. It works. Oh my god. Okay, now I I cannot. <laughs> oh man. Well, that was the big thing for me. I was worried that it wasn't gonna work. All right. Um. <clears throat> so I'm going to put this down. <laughs> I'm gonna put that down gently. Uh, I'm sad because Google, with no notice, changed their entire recommendation system and broke my wonderful automation that I worked and stressed out. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, I'm sorry about that. Uh, you know, maybe they should have sent you an email letting you know that they were gonna do that. Um, did anybody catch the Jared Freitas threat model customer engagement thing uh, a bit ago? All right, so yeah, it's working. Okay, so I'm gonna click XCPNG. Now, um, the the other issue is, and I may end up having to figure out how to blast this completely uh, big. The font on the screen on the monitor was like ten point or like two point font, and I couldn't see shit. Oh, okay, so I it didn't work. It didn't work for what I wanted it to. Um, let me hit Control Alt Delete. Okay. What I was hoping to do was interrupt the boots so we could start over and do all the things. Um, hit, 
Now is the time where we pound on the keyboard with the delete and the F12s to make it work. You rat bastard. Oh. That didn't work. Okay, so it says three, two, one. Yep, yeah, so I'm, I'm getting these ACPI errors, which I'm assuming are power related. Um, hmm. Maybe I put it in the wrong, um, nope, not going to say that. Maybe I put it in the wrong side. There we go. <clears throat> Found out that we're going to have concrete poured next uh, on the, the 13th of March, and um, we have to be in the house trapped. Oh, there we go. Um, that worked. Okay, so, so there's the UEFI where you see the XC. PNG and the UEFI OS. So it does have a proper ROM in this thing. Um, so I'm going to run that right there because that's the USB hard drive. Okay, so. Oh, that's weird. Okay. All right, so it's, it's doing its thing. I don't know why the Lenovo is off center. Hey, you missed all our snow. La I wouldn't say I was missing it, D-dubs. Um, uh, yeah, that's why we moved down here. Yeah, I'm super, super bummed. Uh, I, I do kind of feel bad for the owner of our old house because, well, I did leave them a lot of de-icer, and they're probably going, why would he leave that? That's stupid. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. well, that would explain a lot. <laughs> One sec. Yep, wrong thumb drive. Puppies don't get snow days. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right, so um, it's kind of like the, the the Princess Bride. Which one is the correct thumb drive? You know, so, see. So this is the Windows one. This is the one I need to actually install. So let me. Put that in there, and then I'll do a three-fingered salute. Actually, let me just go ahead and hit the power button and start this mother over again. Um, uh, oh, by the way, we um, are a proud sponsor of B-Sides San Diego, and uh, we are uh, helping out a local group that needs... Uh, needs tickets so we're um we're, we're going to be buying some tickets so the the cyber club of el camino can attend b-side san diego with us so very uh, excite much excite about that um, oh there we go much excited about helping out those folks get there so it's linux running windows yeah <laughs> it, that's lindos man remember lindos Remember back in the day, they had Lindos. I don't know how that person did that, but um, they they did man. Uh, okay, that didn't work. <clears throat> mm -hmm. There we go. <clears throat> it's like you got to start pounding the F12 and delete keys. Media. I don't know which key it is. It's probably the F12, but uh, I don't know, you know. Rat bastard. Mm -mm -mm. One of these days I'll figure out how grub works, and then I will, uh, you know, have power over everything. Okay, I'm just going to pound the F12 key because I think that's the, the key you use to make it happen, so. Only second to Mac uh, running one, oh, there it is. Yep, it's the F12. All right, so yeah, there you go. Cruiser Fit, Partition 1, UEFI. There we go. All right, so um, obviously it presents you with these choices. Um, install, install with our alternative kernel, no serial, safe, multipath shell, mem test. So um, I, I just went directly to the install. Haha, <laughs> got your ass. Just took a little bit. 
And of course, I don't worry about ESD because I don't. Uh, so you've got you know, you've got all the post tests running. The install is going to be interesting because it did give me like two point font there, so I may end up like zooming in on the uh, the screen here on the on this to and my old ass eyes can't read three point font anymore. So. Uh, so the pass through works on the HD 60 plus. That's awesome. <clears throat> I don't expect to get this done in one day. Um, I took me half an hour just to get the damn thing to post. So <laughs> with, post with the right thumb drive, no less. Um, and of course it's plugged into the, there it goes. Okay. So we're doing the thing. Uh, let me see if you only use Vim, this would never, you shut your face, Beta. You filthy filther with your Vim talk around here. We only use VI and we like it, okay? So you can just colon WQ bang with all that. So no, you just colon Q bang and don't even W. Just, you know, you know escape without saving. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, uh, you know, well, well, I'll just vamp a little bit here. So we had a uh, format error. <laughs> That's a good handle. Uh, followed us here uh, about seven days ago. Thank you for that. Uh, Oz Crypter, thank you for that. So following as well. And uh, Producer Wolf uh, for following. Speaky07430. Oh, well, okay. So that's a, that's a new wrinkle. Let me... Um, there we go. Okay. So messages. Oh, yeah. My trainer's messaging me. He's like, Hey, how the legs feel, bruh? Cause I, uh, I, uh, let me, let me, let me, let me format this a little nicer, a little, little, a uh, little bit of zoom in here. So I, I hit a new max on my leg workout. So my squats, I hit like 390 on the, uh, on the, on the, there we go. Okay, cool. Yeah, that worked. Okay. It's going to look ugly as sin. So, um, it's okay. So, uh, first thing it says, please select key map you'd like to use. I just use the QWERTY US. Oh, I forgot my normal streaming keyboard doesn't work. Uh, the mouse will work if I wanted to use it, I think probably, let me see. Nope. Okay, so I'll just use the keyboard uh, tab space bar to a select. Uh, it says this setup tool can be used to install or upgrade XCPNG on your system or restore your server from backup. Installing XK XCP will erase all the data on the disk selected for use. Please make sure you've backed up any data. Nah, I don't need to back up anything. I'm good. Uh, load device drivers. No, I didn't. I didn't need to load device drivers or do any kind of advanced storage classes uh, on that. So I just, you know, punch through here. It's uh, looking for, you know, it's querying existing products. Probably looking at the DMA, uh, D message. Uh, program intended to use our free software. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No warranty. Something, something, something. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, only product installations cannot be upgraded that have been detected. Um, Whoops. Oh, I'm going to make this a little bigger for everybody to read because my, like I said, my old ass eyes can't see that. And of course this may end up just, you know, being hot garbage. All right. So only product installations that cannot be upgraded have been detected, right? Continuing or result in a clean install, all existing configs lost. Yes. Yes. Let's do that. I wish, I wish to break everything yeah i hit 390 and he's like oh good job how does your legs feel and i was like legs are fine it's my shelf is just killing me you know uh because uh man um yeah so i i am technically that's right i i i'm brian i come from the internet so as you can see sda is the um the western digital drive i showed y'all earlier the blue drive uh, and the NVMe is the one that's underneath the motherboard uh, where I, I pointed at, but I can't show you without tearing the whole thing apart and electrocuting myself. So um, I'd like to install it on the MVNE because I have some weird thought that MVME is going to be faster than the SDA drive. I'll use the SDA drive for things like VMs or, or what have you. 
Um, my understanding currently with, oh, the other thing I thought with A.2 was it had a maximum, I don't know why you would have a VM size of two terabytes, but there was like a maximum disk size of two terabytes. Uh, the good news is you can install things like ZFS so you can add additional pools, additional drives if you wanted to, maybe a bigger thumb drive that you could, you know, pool into your ZFS to allow for, you know, another 512 or a terabyte of space if you needed it. So... Um, that's always an option. It's something you can install as part of, you know, the, the XCP afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, select that one. So you see the MV and E and it says, which drives do you like to use for virtual machine storage? So, um, I can use, I'm going to use SDA, which is the terabyte drive. Uh, that's the thumb drive. Oh, it's only eight gigs. Okay. That's fine. And then the MV and E, uh, MV, M E. Uh, drive, which is the uh, the the Hynix uh, 512. So, uh, and that's still 512 is still plenty for most folks, right? Uh, the other thing that I found, uh, I I went with LVM when I first did the installation of this, but I was reading after the fact after I built it, and they're like, no, 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 use EXT because you want to take advantage of that thin provisioning, which I'm not exactly sure what that means, uh, but uh, somebody had suggested using EXT instead of LVM or Logical Volume Manager for uh, thick, uh, the, the thick provisioning. So, um, doink, 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 doink. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and follow that advice. Worst comes to worst, I blow it all the way and start over. So, all right. It says, please select. Now that means also that my, my installation procedures may be slightly different than what I did originally. So I'll let you know when that happens. I don't have any NFS set up with, uh, with the installation source on it. So I'm going to use HTTP, FTP. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm going to put dual stack um, for the ETH0 because I don't know if, you know, I don't, uh, you know what, let's not tempt fade. Let's just go ahead and use IPv4 because that's what everybody uses. DHCP, I've got it plugged into my satellite Orbi over here. Um, so I don't need to use a VLAN or anything like that. <laughs> Glad I didn't see it. Yes. Yes, gross beta wolf. Uh, <laughs> um, just remember, uh, while I'm doing this, if you like watching me suffer and trying to go through this thing, please feel free to donate bits or subscriptions. Uh, I did read something today that they are looking at investing in fee increases for subscriptions, which kinds of, which kinds of, which kinds of, it does suck. Uh, I know that they've implemented it in other countries uh, already, and they're definitely investigating doing it to uh, the U.S. So, but uh, if you want to support me before it gets expensive. That was uh, that was very loud. Um, yeah, I'm sending my I'm sending my Air Force from Miramar over to uh, you know interrogate your house with uh, extreme prejudice. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of the joys of living near Miramar Air Station uh, or Marine Corps Air Station. So, uh, would you like to test your installation or repository? It can cause significant network traffic. No, I'm going to skip verification because I never did it when I was in uh, Linux. Uh, set password. Now you can reset this again after the fact. It's just basically the root password of your system. So I'm just gonna type in a password here. I will change it later. My threat model is not one where somebody is going to hack me immediately. Uh, everything is completely internal and my XCP instance will not be exposed to the internet at large. All right, and so, R-U-O-O-T. If you add a bang, I think that would probably be a legit password. So that's that's seven characters. So yeah, add a bang, and that would be uh, that would be your eight character password. So uh, all right, uh, I address type is IPv6. We'll just go ahead and go that way. And then you know there might be legit reasons to use IPv6 if you're just love to use IPv6 completely in your network. That's possible. I know that I get an IP address that is both IPv4 and v6 on my network. 
So, you know, uh, Netgear is actually doing quite well in that respect. Uh, so please specify how network sh networking should be configured for the management interface on this host. See, so the problem I've got right now is I have one NIC on this system. Um, I actually uh, added this USB hub because it has another USB uh, and I plugged it into the USB-C port. Uh, it does detect this uh, USB hub. It's actually quite a large hub. It's got uh, one, two, three, three. It's got a display port and two HDMI. I mean, it's got like a 16-in-1 connection. I think I bought it for like 30 bucks five, six years ago when I still used a Mac. Uh, and I kept it around. So um, it's also got USB-C for power, and it has another USB-C port on it. So that's another good thing. Um, but yeah, so I'm trying to figure out. If, there's something that it won't allow it to share the the NIC for two things. Like I can't, you know, I I'm it, I'm not smart enough to have it share two IP addresses. I'm gonna make it do DHCP again. Um, host name. I'm gonna just go ahead and. Actually, oh yeah, I, I was gonna call it. So the the name of the system, we'll call it uh, Mothership XCP. That way, I that way I know what it is. Uh, I started naming things inside my house after what it does. So I have like Dash Web or something like that. I know an attacker love that kind of shit. So um, don't do that for at work uh, if you can keep from it. So. Actually, um, somebody was um, somebody told me the new hotness is using like the nine hundred ish or so Pokemon names uh, to you know, including origin forms and all that. So you know, instead of using like Lord of the Rings characters where you had Gimli and all that stuff, there's like nine hundred names you can use for your you know your 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 characters now or for your servers now. So America, I live in America. Uh, I'm going to go down to Los Angeles because they don't have a San Diego. Forever, forever missing. Uh, use DHCP NTP servers, yes. I mean, if you wanted to change them, you could. You could use like pool.ntp.org uh, or uh, you can use like time.nist.gov. That's another one. Uh, if you wanted to, you can actually go down here and provide them manually if you'd like. Um, but I just use the ones that came with my DHCP lease. It says we've collected all the data you need. Go ahead and install. Doink. So now I'm nuking my box. 1,020. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm actually, um, um, I'm on my, my, my Pokemons right now. I just uh, defeated Giovanni, I think, as a team leader for Pokemon Go. So, yeah, I'm getting, getting all my Pokemons in today. Um, Charmander's got a little hat on today. That's the I love the collectible aspect of this. So, boink, great shot. <laughs> um, so we're prepping for installation. This is very much what looks like, you know, Fedora or something like that. Heard some updates coming to the events. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I I just finished up getting the you know, I hadn't played in a while, so it had been like twenty six twenty. It was. Like 2018, 2019, I stopped playing for a few years. And then I came back and found out, well, I could have played during the pandemic because they opened it up and you can do remote raids through um, uh, Poke Genie and all those. So I was like, I'm, I'm doing raids on my couch with folks in South Korea and, you know, catching. Because one of the things is I played, but I didn't have enough people around that we could go and like form five or six, you know, raids to be able to uh, go and... Um, you know, capture Dialga and Giratina and all those folks. So um, being able to get on with a, a host in, you know, South Korea and have 12 people on at the same time from all over the, all over the world to be able to do those is great. So um, I thought I would have a faster connection. Oof, I hope to God this is fast. Um, so yeah, while we're, while we're waiting for that, let me go back over here. Um, let's go look at some of the XK, uh, XCP stuff. Let's see. X. Oops. Let me double check and make sure I just didn't kill my... Uh, okay, good. Uh, XCP dash NG. 
So the documentation apparently is fairly decent. Uh, this is almost a direct open source version of Zen, uh, Zen Orchestra, uh, Zen um, uh, Community Edition. Uh, you can use Zen Orchestra, or they call something XOA, which I believe is the the other version that you don't have to compile from source. Uh, you can use Zen Orchestra Web UI for uh, managing Central Console. Um, oh, good, we're we're going quick. Okay, one of the forgot that you can I can, got another monitor over here running. So, thank God for one gigabit download. So, it's going fairly quickly now. Um, Sable Finance. I don't know who that is. Screen the call. There we go. Um, yeah, so you can do things like, you know, do reports, and it's running 24-7 in a daemon, so you can do ACLs or self-service, VM load balancing. Um, you can do software-defined networking. Weird. Uh, backups, you can do disaster recovery and replication, backup with RAM, you can do warm migrations. They actually have several different scenarios on this site on where it's like you can do a warm migration from, uh, you know, other other sites. So um, where was it? There, there were several things. It was like, well, if you want to move from this to XCP, here's how you do it. And it's like, oh, you 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 know, transfer, and then you shut down the old one, and it'll move the diffs, and there's just a whole bunch of stuff involved if you wanted to to play with that. So, the, yeah, there's different options here. you got XO Lite, which is a Zen Orchestra Lite. Uh, you can run it directly from your browser without having to deploy anything. Uh, it's still a work in progress, so obviously, you know, there's a bit of a lift here. I, I tried to build a Zen Orchestrator. Uh, um, uh, calling for Christian Garcia. Okay, that's the same time. Somebody's already tried to call me once and said Christian Garcia lived here at this phone number, and that is not the case. So here's what ExoLite looks like. Uh, you can see all of your instances that are running, uh, you know, your hosts that are active, inactive, your VMs. Wow, 50. Wow, that's this is a this is a fat machine they're running on here. Jesus. RAM usage. Okay, yeah, they've got 255 gigs of RAM. That's yeah, 255 gigs of RAM uh, on an R620. Okay, so they have multiple hosts. So an R620, that would be the Adele, Adele R620. Hey, fix it. What's up? Um, glad you're here. We're playing with XCPNG. Uh, so um, you can go in. It's a it's a, a home, it's not a home lab. It's a, it's a Zen community edition. So you can go and poke around and look at some of the stuff on there. Um, yeah, the installation requirements here, um, five you know, up to five terabytes of RAM, 16 physical NICs, 288 logical processors per host. See, I've got a big fat, my old server over there that I used to stream with that has a nice bunch of RAM and stuff. That would be perfect for one of these. But again, the the nineteen the 920 here that I bought is, is more than adequate for what I may or may not want to use it for because um, we'll see, so... Memory, it doesn't mention anything about needing two physical, like, NICs. So, um, you, obviously, you're not going to install on a USB drive. Frequent writing will rapidly degrade a USB drive. Uh, also, don't want to use SD cards unless um, they do have, like, I don't want to say the mil spec, but they have, like, the really heavy-duty SD cards uh, that do, like, even writing, which may be a thing. If you absolutely need to, you'd want to make sure that your SD card is allowed for, like, like even writing across the entire card instead of it constantly, and I don't say it's writing literally, but it's like, you know, different space, you know, it, it's not going to be hitting the same place over and over and over again in, in memory. Um, yeah, one or more gigabyte, 10 gigabit NICs are recommended for past uh, physical to virtual uh, migrations. So if you're still doing on-prem, uh, P to V, physical to virtual, and or import or export of data transfers in VM for live navigation. We recommend you use multiple NICs for redundancy. I don't have that. Uh, well, I technically would have that if I wanted to do it that way. Um, so, yeah. Um, ensure your time setting on your server is set to UTC. Oh, interesting. In some support cases, serial console access is required for debugging purposes. Uh, we recommend you configure serial console access. I don't have that on that system. That's interesting. I wonder how I would do that. Yeah. Um, G 
generally supported uh, officially OS. There's a lot more to run. It will run. Yeah, all the Windows server boxes. It will run Windows 11, I think, in 8.3 beta. Uh, I think they were testing that out. Anything that has a TPM or needs a TPM, which is one reason I was like happy that I was able to, to run Windows 11 on that. Um, so it'll run all the BSDs and all the Linuxes. Um, resource pools. That was something that came up when I had an error message earlier. Oh, wait. Um, wow, that, that didn't take long. Okay, has completed. Remove any local media from the device and press enter to reboot. All right. All right. Thumb drive removed. All right, and I will... Okay, so I had some ACPI errors earlier when I was doing this. For what it's worth, you can add a dedicated TPM module if really needed. Yeah, um, I think we talked about this a little bit in the Discord where it was like I'm seeing a bunch of like ads on Amazon for second, like third party TPM modules, which it's kind of, uh, you know, are you going to buy a TPM module from, you know, insert company from China here? Uh, or, you know, I mean, you'd want to figure out who are the legit TPM module makers. Oh, wait a minute. Um, one second. Okay, one, deactivate, activate. There we go. Okay, so I got a bunch of ACPI errors. Um, yeah, failure connect, creating, failure creating, failure creating. I don't know what all that means. I'd have to definitely look those up, but I have a feeling it has something to do with some power requirements or, or something. Um, the funny thing is I have a really big monitor in there, but it's like, I don't want to say 80 by 25 output, but it is. Um, <clears throat> and it's sitting here for a few minutes. It's it's going to load up to a UI. Uh, uh, TPM is not a scam. Uh, I think you can actually make Windows 11 run without a TPM, but... As, as Betawolf and I have learned uh, last year when I was still up in Seattle, uh, boxes tend to blue screen a little bit when you're playing with things like hypervisors. And I think it had something to do with me not running Windows 11 on a supported box, which that box over there won't work with. Um, it will only work with uh, Windows 10. And then there's the problem is like, well, are you buying one that's made for a Dell box? You know, I don't know if the TPM sockets are universal. If I could buy one TPM type that would fit in a specific spot, like a, a PCI slot or something like that. Come on, man. Uh, taking its sweet time. Because it pops up with like an in curses kind of interface. There it goes. There it goes. All right, so let me shrink this bad boy up a little bit. All right, and we are installed. I just have to go in and configure some things, but we are installed. Uh, as you can see, here's all the, the output here. Uh, my IP address, 192.168.1.51. Uh, uh, what about the TPM being external from the processor not being safe anyways? Uh, you know, um, yeah, I mean, there's that, right? Uh, you know, if the if if you've got an external TPM and the pathways between it and the CP are not encrypted, yeah, that's a problem. Um, it depends on if you can actually do any kind of in the middle type attacks, you know, between those and grab that key information, or if you actually have to be within physical presence and being a bad attacker. Um, I, I would imagine any kind of TPM attacks would require you to be physically in the place. Usually TPM modules located on the motherboard, not the CPU. I want to say that some of the newer Intel CPUs have a TPM module in them. Let me see. Intel CPU with TPM. Yeah, so according to Intel, if your computer is based on the 8th generation or later Intel Core processor family, then your system has Intel PTT, an integrated TPM that adheres to the 2.0 specifications. Refer to how to identify your core generation. So there is a, this is from uh, them. 
Yes. Happy to see you fix it. Appreciate you being here. So, um, yeah. So according to, according to that, according to their website, um, they have, uh, if you've purchased a PC in the several years, it's likely you already have a TPM capable of running TPM 2.0 installed in your computer. However, it's possible your TPM may have been turned off in the firmware by the manufacturer and require you to enable it to meet the new requirement. So, yeah, I. It, it says core processors. Those are Xeons over there. I've got two Xeons in that over there. So those Xeons may not be of a certain generation that have the TPM installed on it. Uh, for whatever reason, I can't install Windows 11 technically on that box. So, but yeah, it is what it is. So, all right. So I've got status display. So um, this is as far as I've gotten uh, in this system. So there's there's a ton of things you can do here. Network and management interface, um, authentication. So I have none. You're currently not logged in. Uh, virtual machines. So I could, you know. Hit enter to view VMs running on this box. I have none. Okay, so uh, I go back, left or right to go back. That's kind of cool. So you use the up, down, left, right keys to, to do that. Host performance information. So 0% of 12 CPUs. I'm using 14% of 15 gigs of RAM. Uh, all VMs, there are no VMs. Duh. Okay, so. Um, so uh, the the other thing was uh, I was what was I trying to set up and it said you didn't have any SRs configured. I'm thinking someone getting their laptop with sensitive stuff stolen. I would never encrypt though. Lol. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Fix it. Um, yeah, and it really depends on where you're going, right? Um, if you're traveling, especially internationally, I would I would definitely think about having you know, some kind of secure boot or um, password to boot or something like that, even in the Five Eyes countries or, or you know. Uh, uh, this is a an alternative to Proxmox. Yes, fix it. Um, um, you can you can definitely try XCPNG if you'd like. No, definitely not China there, Beta Wolf. No, definitely not China. Um, China is the real DEF CON, not this Vegas thing that we do where people... Uh, complain so um, all right so this is the website I'm I switched over to a different output here so um, we've installed everything it says follow the instructions you know we're, we're going through the instructions on how to install obviously are here um, oh this is where they said uh, you know we advise to use ext to benefit from thin provisioning so I'm assuming that is Im terribly important Thin provisioning is a mechanism that applies to large-scale centralized computers, disk storage, SANs, and storage virtualization. Thin provisioning allows space to be easily allocated to servers on a just-enough and just-in-time basis. Oh, there you go. So the LVM version is probably where you would want to allocate 60 gigs, an entire 60 gigs, to a Linux box instead of you know, having it be flexible, kind of like when you do with VMware, you can say, well, I, I want at minimum to start 20, but you can go up, you know, it, it will it will flex depending on the the type there. So that, that makes sense to me now. So, excuse me. When the installer skips step five automatically, some users mistake this step with the selection of the system disk. Okay, so done that, done that, done that, done that. NTP, yeah, 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 okay, all right, completing installation, yeah, 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 net install, okay, so uh, you can even T TFTP it if you wanted to do it that route um, and, and download it and run it, install it that way. Uh, they have IP, I, IPXE over HTTP install. Uh, when I got this box, uh, initially it, it tried to do a PXE boot, a Pixie boot off my, uh, off my network. Uh, my, my guess is this was like a thin client or something used at like a retail or something like that. I didn't actually bother doing kind of hard drive forensics because I was like, if they didn't wipe it, I don't want to know what's on there because then that, you know, I, I don't want to be playing around with data that might be, you know, somebody's, somebody's, you know, sales or personal identifying or personal health information. So I just wiped the drive. I've actually wiped it four times now, so. And overwritten it with XCP. So... If there was anything on it and I, you, you know, your company that's like, oh shit, he's got my box. Don't worry. I didn't look at any of your shit. So, um, <clears throat> all right. So that's Pixie. Um, 
what I was trying to look for was like next steps. What do you do with it when you're done with it? So yeah, okay. So next, migra oh, here's the migration things. So like if you're migrating from Zen server to XCP. Um, yeah, I lost all those Bitcoins. <laughs> I didn't lose anything. Um, if I had Bitcoin, I didn't lose anything. So um, <clears throat> Dedicated section, yeah, migrating from Citrix, uh, from Zen on Linux, you know, from VirtualBox, from VMware. So they do virtual to virtual. So if you're going, like, let's say your your company's trying to go from VMware to something else, uh, V2V is, is definitely something you can do. Uh, and they give you instructions on how to do proper export import. Um, they have the Hyper-V instructions as well. They suggest going to a VXD format if you're going to, you know, move your, your VMs over. Or a direct VM copy if you like to live dangerously. Uh, from K oh, KVM. KVM was the other one I was trying to think of for Linux, not not LXC, which is a Linux container, the, the KVM stuff. Digital says, hey, I've been out of the loop. What's the big VMware controversy? Okay, so um, they got bought for $61 billion uh, by Broadcom. And Broadcom also bought Carbon Black, I believe, and has turned it to shit, according to people who use Carbon Black. Uh, and so the thought, and they also got rid of the free tier of ESXi. So it's gone there. There it will be no more, uh, no more ESXi for uh, free people for free versions of things. Yeah. So um, ESXi has gone away as of the 14th of February. Uh, they're getting rid of the free version of that, which a lot of people run ESXi uh, as a hypervisor in their home labs because it was free, right? So um, obviously. People are looking for alternatives. So like Fix It said, um, yeah, and and I believe they're bumping the amount of licensing for VMware because they just <laughs> they just spent sixty one billion dollars on this shit. So they got to make their money back. Uh, fat loot, fat loot, you know. Uh, no, they didn't give people thirty days to migrate. I think they said what? Um, well, I think. Um, I, I assume you can continue to use the version you have now as long as you don't actually go out for updates. The minute you try to update it, it may invalidate the license. <laughs> or, you know, you're stuck on 8.0. whatever for the rest of your life. But at some point, you know, somebody's going to find a crushingly bad ESXi vulnerability and then it's only a matter of time and then it's going to be the, yeah. <laughs> Great reason to pi pirate VMware keys. Um... I don't know if VMware works. I, I would assume VMware Workstation is still going to be a thing. But yeah, um, yeah. Okay, so management, local management. If you have one host or small pool, you can use the following tools. So you can use the XECLI, talking to a host directly. XOLite, which is the embedded lightweight web client. Zen API, which is XAPI, or XCPNG Center, which is a Windows client deprecated and not supported. Okay. And then they, they tell you at scale, you can use the Zen Orchestra Web UI, the CLI, or the APIs, which are REST and JSON uh, APIs. Uh, so um, I actually tried, so what was it? I was, I was going to use the Web UI, and they supposedly had versions or to help you explain how to run this. So... Zen Orchestra is fully open source and comes in two flavors. The turnkey pre-installed virtual appliance is called XOA, which you can deploy in a minute, tested and bundled with actual, this should be actual, uh, commercial support, uh, or a manual install from GitHub, no QA or stable version, community supported only. So that one sounds easy. Let's do that. Uh... You're about to start the deployment of Zen Orchestra 5 in your infrastructure. Everything, is, this is a safe place. No, no, see, that's exactly what bad guys would tell you. It's got a lock. See, it's got a green thing because green is good. Everything that happens from now on is between your browser and your host. Nothing is sent to our servers. <laughs> exactly, Digital Warhead. Run! Save yourself! Dear God! All right, so let's... <sighs> Okay, so this is this is the site is called vates.tech. 
Are you rooting for me, Digital Warhead? I see you've got four flags going, yay, go Brian, or something. I'm sure that's I'm sure that's what you meant by that. So Yeah, red flags. Yay! Wave that red flag there, Digital Warhead. Okay, cool. Alright, so. Alright. 168.1.51. Log in as root. Now that that's the thing that made my ass pucker a little bit, because they were like, oh, you're gonna log in as root. And I'm like, no, don't do that. I'm sure there's a way to secure it. I don't even know if they'll continue that, right? And I bought one of those cheap keys. There was an update now. I'm not sure if I dare to. I think the other thing was people had asked what's going to happen to Fusion. Um, people on Mac were saying, hey, they're going to have to go to like Parallels or something. I've tried using Parallels on Mac. It's okay. Um, I ended up just giving up. I still have VMware Workstation, I think, on this box so I can futz around with things. But yeah, I think VMware 16 or 17, whichever the last version is, it might be run. Wisdol, WSL. Did you just throw the European Union flag up on me there, Beta-Wolf? Wow, okay. All right, so I'm going to type in my El Pasarino that I have. Er, you're unable to log into the host using HTTPS. Okay, please visit this page and accept self-signed search. Oh. God, this thing makes my ass sweat just thinking of that. Okay, so. Oh, God. <sighs> Mama Kitty, come here and save me. Come here. You're going to have to be my spirit animal. All right, let's do this. Now, now. Yo, you get that. Now, you get that. Now, now. All right, let's do this. Now, now. All right, we're going to accept the risk and continue. Oh, my God. Look at this. It's working. Mare. All right, you're my spirit animal, okay? Now, don't put your butt up to people. Nobody wants to see that. Yeah, your chocolate starfish is your own, okay? You don't share. You don't share that. <gasps> Holy shit, it's working. Okay, so this didn't work for me last night. I was actually trying to install and run Zen Orchestrator and all this stuff. Um, this this didn't happen for me before, so um, this is this is my boxing. Welcome. Have a fruit roll-up. That's a bare naked ladies reference. Um, all right, so we see Mothership. XO Lite is under construction. New features are coming soon. Uh, this is this is the web service running on my box right now. I think that's that's the way I understand it. There's a service that's running on HTTPS on my. Hold on, you know you're really you know I love you that you're my spirit animal. But so this is the the box that I had showed everybody earlier. It's a little um yeah, it's a you know little little square box that you might see at a, a point of sale or at a restaurant. You know if you're at an Applebee's or something and they run your your stuff. It's a I think it's a thin client for most folks, but it's got an i7 Intel in it with 16 gigs of RAM. Um, I've got a terabyte drive in it, SSD. The CPUs underneath the, the fan. Do not stick your fan in your nose on that. You electrocute yourself, then I'm going to take you to the doctor. Um, and this is the fan that's running inside of it to cool everything. Uh, and underneath, under this pad on the bottom, if I took the hard drive off and everything, is 16 gigs of DIMM. It's like a DIMM. And uh, a 512 gigabyte drive. So it's about uh, 300 bucks. Um, I mentioned it on... Uh, a little earlier in the stream. You can go back and look at it um, if, you, if you'd like. Don't touch that, okay? Yes, I love you too. Yes, you're my favorite. All right, so. Uh, we got stats, we got system. Okay, so there's not a lot going on here. A lot is still under construction. It's very much like the MySpace of the world. Uh, so... Um, Still trying to figure out what I can do here. <clears throat> Let me see. Uh, alarms, the dashboard. Okay, so yeah, not a lot's going on. You can see I'm using 2.26 gigabytes out of 16 gigs. And if you can see over here, you still got everything that's going on over here. So, um, CPU provisioning, 
uh, um, things are still loading. This is, I think, still pretty much an alpha or uh, not 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 ready for prime time. So um, configure secure deploy deployment documentation. Let's see. Okay, first login. Okay, run. Okay, so once you've started the VM, you can access the web UI by putting you IP. You can. Oh wait, my bad. Sorry, sorry, y'all. Um, There we go. Once you started the VM, you can access the web UI, putting the IP address in. Run XE VM list params enable on your host. Checks your router's DHCP for an XOA release. Uh, default web UI credentials are admin at admin. No, no, no. No, no, no. We're not going to get up there. No, no, no. Stay right there. Okay, baby. All right. Uh, to register your appliance. Yeah, I'm not going to hook up with anything server and cloud related here. Um, interesting. Yeah, cause can <laughs> no don't 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 enable her uh, beta. Um, don't don't listen to Mr. Beta Wolf. We'll get you in trouble. Uh, so yeah, there's a number of different things that you can add. There's a uh, code. See, they, they're suggesting you go and fetch the code to get source to be able to build your dependencies for Zen Orchestra. Uh, yeah, she's a pain in my ass, but I love her. And she's gone. She's still going through a few things. She's trying to gain weight. Um, but yeah, she's she's still working it out. We're, we're putting her on some new food and things. So um i actually tried running and building yarn uh it didn't work because this relies on a lot of things like uh npm and node and all this shit and i'm like uh this is making my head hurt just for freaking zen orchestrator uh as you can see there's a number of different things they're asking you to to install on here uh including things like redis for um for you know data storage and data repositories um this is this is for yeah Zen Orchestra and I'm like oh this is god awful yarn for yeah package building. Uh, what I'd like is you know it'd be nice if you could do it from like a command line or something. Um, let me pop this. Okay, so this just takes me back there to how to build it manually. Uh, no QA or stable version. So do I really want to install you know XO from from that? So. Um, yeah, deploy the Zen Orchestra virtual appliance. You can deploy Zen Orchestra from the UI using, okay, so, yeah, I've already done that. Okay, so, yeah, I've already done all this, so. Problem is, yeah, XO doesn't have sources, doesn't have QA, no stable versions, great for a home lab or make tests, but not for production. Okay, so they suggest the lightweight client for production for the enterprise versus Zen Orchestrator from, from that, so. Um, you know, I, I am, it, it's, y'all have followed me enough. It's rare that I actually can do something without, you know, it going pear-shaped on me. So I'm waiting for the other, the other, you know, foot to drop here on this and, you know, me messing something up. Uh, <clears throat> is this a JavaScript issue? No, I've, I've enabled all the JavaScript on here. So um, network throughput, alarms. What I want to do is I want to build a, a server. I want to build a, a you know system here. Have needs or expectations? Let us know. Okay, so they have a. Apparently, the, it's been very active the last few weeks with the announcement that they're getting rid of ESXi because either people go to Proxmox or they go to XCP XI, uh, NG. But since I, I'm thinking that XCP might win this game because they're Zen, right? And a lot of companies you know, use Zen or, you know, the people who don't like VMware or whatever will use. You going to go? You going to go? No? Yeah? Should have got off pot. You want to get back up here? I'm good with that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm entirely okay with that. Um, yeah, uh, we started to work on XO Lite. The goal is to remove the need for a light client to do basic management. See this uh, goal: small UI without any external requirements. Being able to do basic admin on host or pool when you need to. Fallback solution when you can't use regular Zen Orchestra. What XO Lite is not central UI to manage your whole infrastructure. Okay, so XO XO Lite is going to be basically your dashboard, so you don't have to 
you know, set up a bulk, you know, you don't have to waste resources running a full VM just for a fancy ass dashboard. So, and, and maybe the fact that there's nothing going on, oh, it's for VMs. I am not running any VMs, so it's waiting for VMs to pop up in here. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly decent with the, yeah, alternative way to deploy XOA. Okay, that makes sense from the CLI. I tried running this on, you know, last night on the box from an SSH connection. It didn't work. So let me go back to my site here. Local command shell, root, and actually, let me see if I can see what's going on on the dashboard when I'm doing things here. Um, okay. Sorry, y'all. I'm going to. No, oh, you asshole. Oh, wait. My bad. There we go. Okay. So, got my terminal window here. Um, let me. Uh, where is it? Okay. So, bash. I know it's a little small. I will make that a little bigger in a second. Dollar sign wget dash q zero dash https xoa dot io slash deploy. And then Yeah. Okay, that and that. There we go. All right. So, oh, three mice, two keyboards, and a partridge in a pear tree. All right. <clears throat> Okay, so, yeah, this is where I ran into problems. It was like, do you want to set up your DHCP? And I said, yas. And then it's like, do you want an SSH connection? I said, yas. So I put my password in. And then it said, no SR specified and pool default SR is null. So SR is storage, repo uh, storage repos, I believe. If we look up the command there where it said... Uh, SCP, XCP, NG, and then what was the, what was the thing? no SR specified. Uh, no SR specified. And pool permit, or pool default SR. SR is no. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so I think this was the error message it gave me. Uh, no, that's that's not what it gave me. Uh, where is it? Well, it wants me to set a default SR, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I can't do that from here. So it says if you want to do it manually, you can go onto the host with SSH and type the following. So... I will go <clears throat> and type XE pool param set UUID. And so just for shits and giggles, you can all see that. And it says if you can find your, you know, XE uh, SR list, your pool UUID will be auto-completed using the tab key. So if I just hit the tab key, it, it gives me something. Um, it's the only one that's available. So, and then if you keep hitting tab, it gives you other things that you can do here. So default, and I will move this over. It says default SR equals... The problem is I don't know what my SRUU ID is, so oh, it supplies that too. How convenient! How convenient! So there's the big long line there. This would be much smaller on a 4K screen, and so uh, and then it says, you know, I should just be able to hit enter, and we'll 
we'll scroll all the way back over. Oh, hey, that worked. All right, good. Okay, so now <clears throat> can I do the same thing over again? Okay, so it's asking me the same stuff again. I just have to... You know, OBS does a lot of good things, except what I, what I would love would be like a screen that sits, you know, like here, where I could look at that. And then I could hit like shift control. And then I, you know, if it's actually larger, so if it's a 4K screen and I've got it shrunk down to, you know, to fit on my screen, I could use the, you know, the mouse to move that around inside the, the window. But yeah, it is what it is. So, all right, DHCP. Um, it's asking me for the SSH account again. And password. Oh, oh is that what? The SR backend does not support the operation. Check the SR's allowed operations. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to leave it on the browser here and I'm going to go look for the error message on here. So it says the SR backend does not allow support the or does not support does not support the operation check <clears throat> okay. What X uh, did I reason? Nah, 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 nah. Did not install XCP tools because not compatible. Okay, so this feels okay. <clears throat> Ouch. It said what? Check the SR allowed operations. Oh, there you go. Hmm. Could it be because I'm already using the web version of? Let me see. Let me just back that up. XCPNG. <laughs> you should try ChatGPT for help. Uh, I don't know if that's actually a thing. Uh, oh, here we go. ProLiant server, Zen servers installed, disk array at one point. Two terabytes, yeah, da, da, da. VDI not available. However, when I run the following error appears at SR backend does not support. What's the type of your SR, your local SR exactly? Okay, so um, let's see. XCP NG SR allowed operations. <sighs> okay. SR allowed operations. <clears throat> Dear, what the? Okay, this is the one I already clicked on. Uh, command line interface, Citrix hypervisor. Mm -hmm. I don't need jobs. I'm good. So far. Okay, let's see. Uh, that'd be easy way to test this in production uh oh yeah so the the additional packages that you can install uh after you've done the installation see it uses yum's enable repo switch uh, so yum is typically in in like fedora and those things so um <clears throat> Uh, regularly updated list is available at 8.2. So yeah, they have a number of different bits here that you can see. So they have uh, like support for some wireless WPA supplicant. They have ZFS, ZFS Draycut, Yum Utils, XFS, uh, um, uh, Zen Server SDK. If you wanted to, you know, 
build things for your Zen server, I guess. Uh, Vim enhanced. There you go, Beta Wolf. Uh, Trace route. They have Tmux, obviously. Socat. Uh, that's a socket, a socket connection uh, uh, ability. Uh, a handful of other things. The the one thing they like they stressed was you don't want this to be a. Uh, they have an Nmap on here, which I found interesting, probably for you know pinging to make sure you can access the uh, the system. Uh, you don't want to be running, you know, security payloads from your Nmap. But one thing they wanted to stress was you you don't want this to be you want this to be as lightweight as possible. Anything that you're planning on running, you want inside of a VM. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, see, keep your DOM zero minimal. Controller domains not an all-purpose Linux system. So you know, it's like an Active Directory server. You don't want to run, you know, a ton of programs on it because it increases your attack surface, right? Uh, so you want to, you know, keep it light, keep it small, keep it fast, right? You don't want a bunch of services running on your DOM zero that's going to bog down your system and take away from the RAM that your VM so preciously need. Um, all right, so management scale. Really don't, really don't understand why the Zen Orchestra web UI doesn't work, but... Um, <clears throat> because XOA is not very good for me. Uh, you can always decide to build it later from scratch. Yeah, okay. Um, oh, God, all right. Oh, wow, it's almost five o'clock. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't like the fact it's got Node in it. It's just got awful. But I mean, what's your options? If you're not using Node, you're going to be using Java, right? And you may still be using Java on this. Uh, before it's over with. The one thing I'm trying I'm trying to figure out is do you run Zen Orchestrator on the box on the box itself or do you install it on your local system to use to connect like XOA? Like I'm using XOA to connect from my server, my my web streaming box to my Zen server. Does XO work the same way, or am I supposed so? This has been validated against fresh Debian 11. Should be nearly the same on dpackaged systems for RPM-based OSs. It should be close, as most of our dependencies come from NPM and not the OS itself. <clears throat> as you've seen in other parts of the documentation, XO is comprised of two parts. XO server, XO web. They can be installed separately, even on different machines, but for the sake of simplicity, we'll set them up together. Is that simple? Is that more simple? <laughs> Packages and prerequisites. All right. So at this point, so this is where they this is where they fuck up. At this point, we're gonna assume you've got a working node on your box. <sighs> if not, see this page on how to install Node. Okay, great. So this is the how-to where it's like, oh, it's five simple steps. The problem is every step has five simple steps in it, and those five simple steps have five simple steps. Um, so, all right, let's assume, no, let's not assume anything. Um, all right, we're on Windows. No, I don't want to run this shit on Windows. God. Uh, okay, let's do that. <clears throat> yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so let's go back over her and pull up the local command shell. I must have... It must have exited out after a while. Okay. Well, that's kind of better, except I'm, you know, moving everything around and nobody can see the uh, the the bits there. So um, I don't want to do. Can I use DNF? First, I got to type DNF. Nope, DNF. I'm assuming yum. Module install node.js. Uh, let's uh, yum install node.js eighteen common okay so far so good nope nothing available okay hmm. <clears throat> so the, the good news is i got xcp installed 
uh, with the exception of those ACPI errors, which doesn't appear to be affecting it any. Uh, why not do as you said, having a window there, easy to put a scene in a scene in OBS? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, okay, what, what happened there? I didn't want to do... Yeah, well, what I wanted to do was, you know, to shrink down. So let's say... Oh, wait, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing wrong now, so... Um, now I know what I'm doing wrong here. There we go. Oh, my God. 800-point font. So I can shrink it down, but the problem is it's like two-point font. And, I mean, I'm literally on a console. I'm not, like, on a full... Uh, you know, shell kind of thing. So if I shrink it down to something that everybody can see the entire screen, then it's still at a 4K resolution. So um, there we go. So, but yeah, so ideally I want you to be able to see what's on the screen. Now, I don't know if you can see that on the screen. If you can, great. Um, but I, I still have to shrink it down so everybody can see the things like the chat window and, and, and all that. So Plus, it's a lot of black space. So ideally, I'd just like to be able to show all of that. So, um, yeah. <sighs> XCPNG works, which is great. Um, but I, what I need to figure out how to do now is... I, I do have high res screens. Uh, um, it's the DPI, and technically, <clears throat> this is the size that I have on my monitor there too. So it's it's really tiny. Um, I'm thankfully can see that uh, because I'm there. But um, yeah, it's not ideal. Um, I could SSH the box and do that too. That that um, I tried doing some of that last night. But what I'm trying to do. I guess the only thing I've got left to do now is figure out I want to I want to put a VM on here. I want to put a VM on here. I I don't necessarily need to manage. I need I want to put a VM on here. Uh using dynamic memory control would be a good way to reduce your memory consumption. Yeah, da 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 da, da whatever. Uh connect to X, uh, using SSH then execute this command with the VM UUID to join. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I can I can set up SSH pretty quickly here. Okay, good. All right, and so SSH. H192.168.1.51. Yep. Okay. So it allows SSH right out of the box. You don't have to open it or start the servers or anything like that. No, that's not the right name. Because you have to log in as root. There we go. <clears throat> okay. No, nah, it's okay. Um, no, nah, I mean, there's more than one way to, to do this, so... Uh, let me hide that, and I will add window capture. I need a terminal. Click OK. Terminal's already in use. Okay, well, let's add existing then. Terminal. Ah, okay. There it is. All right, so I've got my, got my terminal window. <coughs> uh, Oh yeah, okay. Well, let's see how well that works. I don't have the original UI that was um, uh, over on the other side, but um, <clears throat> if I can set up a VM, so let's see. Uh, Windows VM screen resolution, that's not what I want. I want to set up Zen Orchestra CLI. XO Oh, I am oh wait. 
Oh, okay. Oh, I don't have Zen Orchestra installed, obviously. Um, so 8.2. So local management, Exolite, XCP, NG, XC, there we go, XE help, there we go. All right, XE help. Okay, so that's that's what I need there. <clears throat> Some of these commands look very similar, like QEMU, when you use QEMU to set up a VM or, or start a VM. Uh, so let me see, for example, XE help. Post CPU info. Okay. Help all. Okay, so we've got basic syntax is the command, argument value, argument value. Okay. For example, adding a bootable ISO image to a mounted CD-ROM to a VM can be done with the following command. All right, so... Oh. Um, sorry about that. So, yeah, there's the, there's the command to do that. And if the XE command is executed remotely, extra arguments are used to connect and authenticate. Yes, yes, yes. Whew. Man, you can. The one thing you'd want to be careful with is putting your username and password arguments inside the CLI itself. That means you're storing them inside your bash history or what have you. Um, on the remote. Yeah, see, so this is this is dangerous right here. This is very dangerous. Listing your username and your password and your host name uh, in your in your syntax. That's that's god awful. Yeah, you definitely definitely don't want to do this. There's a lot of stupid things in here, so <clears throat> special characters and syntax. Yeah, try not to put any kind of shit like that in there. Keep it keep it UTF eight if at all possible. Um how do you build? Build a VM from CLI XCP and G. Okay, so somebody has asked the question too. How do I build a, C a, a, a VM using only the CLI? Tempting, oh, they're, they're using Citrix Zen server. That's the problem with this. A lot of these share the, a lot of the same, well, XCP is based off of Zen, or uh, 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 Citrix Zen server. So a lot of the same commands and things will work. Also, a lot of the same vulnerabilities will probably work along the same lines if, uh, if they share a lot of the same code. Um, all right, so I'm attempting to create using modified instructions from the machine user guide. For what it's worth, the result seems to be the same whether you use an ISO. Uh, so we use NFS, da da da, or use a remote package. Now they've got SSH running, I can SCP ISOs up to the drive, so it's not like I need to you know, pull those remotely or over NFS, so I don't need to increase my attack surface by including things like NFS on my network. Um, these are the contents of the remote package repository at that location. Checked all the hidden files, classic promises. So PV guest, you know. Okay, that's this is not what I'm wanting. Okay. Zen VM install template, new name. Okay, yeah. Zen Orchestra is almost gonna be a requirement for this system to be able to uh, do anything with it. It feels like there's a lot of Unless you know the automation for the XE command, you're going to have to go in and set those up manually. So, uh, yeah, fix it. I had the web GUI, but it doesn't do much, right? Um, where is it? I uh, know that's not it. Where was it? XO. Oh, here it is. Oh, that's interesting. This oh, this is new. This didn't do this before. Okay. Well, let's give it a shot. Select storage. Um, okay, so it doesn't see any storage on my system. <coughs> Pool wide network. Well, that's weird. Why, why doesn't it see any storage on my network? XLA admin account. So this is, what was the... the 
Fruit. <clears throat> it was admin at admin.net and then password was admin. I think was the try again to deploy exit way. Uh, okay, wait a second. Okay, that was really weird. This has given me different information than before. So where's exit way at? <clears throat> It's fun to come back and find something new and different and weird going on in your, your system here. Uh, where was it? Okay, XOA. Yeah, here we go. All right, so... Do, 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 yeah, admin, admin.net, and admin. Okay. Default or not set, you need to set them as described here. Okay, so... Try again to deploy. Don't need any admin... Okay, so admin at admin.net deploy. No. XOA admin account. Okay. Well let's let's go back and do what it said to describe here. <clears throat> okay, so there's no password set for your XOA system user by default. You'll need to set your own. This can be set by the Zen stored data of the VM. Following this to be running your XMP host. Okay, so I'm not going to show this one. I'll use my keyboard here. All right, so XE VM param set. I guess that works. <clears throat> it's the UUID of your XOA VM. I don't have any of that already. It's really weird. Okay, well, <clears throat> I hit tab and it filled something in. So, Zen store data, VM data. If this doesn't work, I'm going to ping somebody at work who had their setup at home because they had the same problem as everyone else there. Okay. okay, that worked. Hmm. Okay, one second. Hey, Age of Music, how you doing? Um, all right, so um, should be... XOA, no oh, wait, XOA. It's admin to admin.net. Hmm. I don't have any storage. I wonder if I need to reboot or something to enable the storage that I supposedly enabled uh, later, so. Hmm. Okay, login root, yes. Authentication failed. Oh, you know what? And I've now locked myself out, apparently. <clears throat> Hmm. Hmm. Let me reboot or let me re refresh here. Okay, let's go, let's go, yeah. Root. Okay, that worked. Admin admin.net and admin is the password and then XOA. Hmm. I think I'm gonna have to I think I'm gonna have to pick the brain of the person that uh, showed me um, they were deploying that in the office, so because I really don't want to have to install node if I don't have to. There's a lot of assumptions there. 
All good. Trying to decide if I should sleep 2 a.m. or continue to watch this interesting setup. I want to see this work. So no sleep, I guess. Well, no, I'm going to actually have to take off here. My my wife is uh, about to take um, dinner out of the slow cooker. So um, I'm going to keep playing with this. Um, at worst come to worst, we'll come back Friday and we'll, we'll continue setting everything up. Um, and uh, hope, uh, hope you all will be able to join me. Uh, pot roast. We're doing pot roast here, so... Um, we, my, my wife makes kick-ass pot roast, so we've got some taters, and I end up burning my mouth on the carrots, because I don't, wait, you know, I don't wait and, like, let everything cool off, so I, you know, I'll have a nice big blister on the top of my roof of my mouth, uh, at some point tonight, I think. Um, and I can keep playing with this, and I'll hit my, hit my coworker up about how they set their, their lab up at home, because, uh, they, they have this, uh, quite you know. well you know digital warhead if you can you know get yourself down here and you know on your sr72 blackbird x or whatever you know make, make it happen if you can get mach 10 you know we'll be we'll be ready to go your deployment contract got waylaid until april oh that's that's too bad age of music um what happened there um is it just they don't have the money or budget or um, deployment. Are you in the reserves? Uh, military? Ah, contract negotiations. Ah, that's always the way, isn't it? Um, anyway, so while we're, while I'm trying to figure this out, I think I will go and oh, make your deck. Yeah, let's go do make, make your deck. Mobile workstations at the hospital. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I have a lot of respect for folks in the healthcare sector uh, in terms of, you know, having to try to, you know, make people in the healthcare industry care about security. So uh, you you have my uh, respect age, and I think, I think I'm going to go, and I will troubleshoot some of this. I, I promise not to get too far down the rabbit hole on this. Uh, um, if if it does work, I'll just show you the commands that I did. Um, but I, I think I'm going to halt for today. I'm actually quite pleased that everything went as smoothly as it did. So um, let's go. Let's go hit up Maker Deck. Um, so yeah, let's let's uh, let's reconvene on Friday, and hope everyone has a good rest of their week. And uh, yeah, fix it. Go get some sleep. Uh, you know, don't, don't wait up for me. I'm, I'm not, I'm not anything fancy. So yeah, go, y'all go take care. We're going to go, we're going to go watch some robots make things. So have a, have a great rest of your evening and day and week, and I'll see you on Friday. Okay. Bye y'all. Take care.